takes is to be humble. I want to thank Scott Marshall. Let's hear it for Scott Marshall. Yeah. I'd like to thank the award-winning, award winning, pardon me, Hillbilly Soul. Thanks, guys. Yeah! All right, while the next band sets up and gets ready, I'd like to introduce a guy I got to know this weekend, become friends with, Mr. Larry Sinclair. Yeah, Larry! All right, Larry Sinclair follows. All right, nothing personal, but is anybody hot out there yet? Yeah! <laughs> no, actually, I think it's the music. The bands have been phenomenal this weekend. Last night, for those of you who were here, I'm going to switch this up a little bit. Because one of the reasons Paul actually asked me to come to this was because he thought it was important for people to understand exactly how corrupt the government system is, and specifically the Biden family. And if anyone doesn't understand what I'm saying when I'm saying the Biden family, just look at the current vice president that loves to open his mouth and shove both feet in at the same damn time. I don't normally like to talk about my story from 2008 because I think the issues now, it's never been about me and it's still not about me. It's about knowing the truth about the people that we vote for. In 2008, I made some allegations against Barack Obama that were truthful. It turns out, I didn't know what I was opening myself up to. So when I told you last night that the introduction as to who Larry Sinclair is, if you take that introduction from the liberal left in the Obama administration, they would introduce myself to you as some lunatic, pathological, lying, con man, 27-year criminal, pedophile, nutcase. Four years later, everything they've said about me, they've had to eat. On June 16th, excuse me, June 18th of 2008, I did something I had no idea what the hell I was doing. I went to the National Press Club in Washington, D.C., and I stood before the entire press corps and publicly made my allegations against Barack Obama regarding his engagement in homosexual activity and crack cocaine use. Within five minutes after that press conference ended, three U.S. Marshals entered the National Press Club bar where I was waiting for the room to clear out and told me I was under arrest for a warrant from the state of Delaware. Hey, Jim, have a seat. Interestingly enough, there was never a warrant produced by these three U.S. Marshals. Not at the time they placed me under arrest, not at the time that they took me to District 1 for processing in Washington. In fact, they never produced a copy of the warrant for six days while I sat in a D.C. Metro jail. They claimed that I had stolen a thousand dollars or more from a motel owner in Wilmington, Delaware in 2007. These charges came via a sealed grand jury indictment by the Delaware Attorney General, Bo Biden. The indictment was brought without ever producing anything before the grand jury showing that I had stolen anything. I was arrested on June 18th, 2008. I spent six days in DC Metro Jail. I was picked up by the state of Delaware, driven to Wilmington, and released within five minutes of my arrival. I knew that the charges were bullshit, but you have to understand something about me. I've made some mistakes. I don't hide from them. And the one thing Delaware tried to do is use my past mistakes to try to threaten me into admitting to doing something I knew I didn't do. When I told you last night I'm a fighter, that's what I mean. If I do something, I'll stand there and look you in the face and tell you I did it. But if you accuse me of something I know damn well I didn't do, I'll fight you to the bitter end. So I chose to fight in Delaware. First, an attorney by the name of Weir, 
who used to be a former attorney general as well in the state and apparently a good friend of the Biden family, had agreed to represent me and within five hours of that announcement he called me at uh, 5.30 p.m. the day before I was scheduled to appear for my first appearance in a Delaware courthouse. And he said, I'm sorry, but I can't jeopardize the name on my law firm for you. You didn't tell me that you're the idiot that made allegations against Obama. Doesn't matter. A nice gentleman by the name of Fran Farron in Newark, New Delaware, decided to represent me. I presented everything to him, made it very clear to him I wasn't pleading to anything. Susan Dwyer, assistant Delaware AG, consistently tried to convince Fran to tell me to plead guilty to a misdemeanor just so we can get it out of the way. <laughs> I refused to do that. I traveled from my home in Duluth, Minnesota back to Wilmington, Delaware twice to appear for the standard status conference. Only to stand there and tell the judge yet again that I refused to enter a plea of guilty. Democratic National Convention 2008, Denver. I was scheduled to appear in Delaware court on September 2nd. My trial date had been scheduled for 9-11-2008. The day that Joe Biden was nominated Democratic National Convention in Denver, my attorney received a phone call from the Delaware Attorney General's office informing him to tell me not to make travel arrangements for September 2nd. All of a sudden, Delaware decided they had no evidence to bring the charges against me that they brought. I already knew that. But if you read on the internet a description of this incident, all you're going to find are Politico or MSNBC or CNN or even the Delaware News Journal for that matter, making allegations that I was accused of paying for a three-week stay at a motel in Newcastle, Delaware with counterfeit money orders, claiming this is what the court file said. But yet the court file has no such allegations in it, never did. But that's what you'll read even to this day. The day that the Attorney General's office dismissed the charges against me, the Delaware News Journal, their headline was, Anti-Obama blogger will not serve any time for crimes. It didn't matter to them that the Delaware Attorney General's office actually dismissed them with the admission that they had no evidence to proceed to begin with. Paul's right. The Biden family in Delaware is just as corrupt as any place else. Joe Biden is sitting in the VP seat today because he dropped out of the Democratic primary process and his son brought a sealed grand jury indictment exactly 14 days from the date my YouTube video with Obama allegations on January 17th of 2008 went public. Today, people ask me, well, why don't you tell your story? Because, like I told you last night, it's stories like these that when people try to tell you something, you have to admit, it sounds so wild. It's hard to believe. And that's the first response. Oh, you're full of shit. You're just trying to get attention. It doesn't work that way. I don't need attention, believe me. For the last four years, I have lived in a constant hell from the left and the federal government from the Internal Revenue Service, the IRS, the Secret Service, which I have to give credit to, and I know some of you guys are going to think I've lost my mind by saying this, but by Obama sending the Secret Service to my house, it's actually been a protection for me. Because not everybody working in that department is thrilled with the current occupant at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. So every chance they get, they give me a little heads up when something's coming my way. So if I can stand here myself and continue to fight, if I can take this and actually hold all politicians accountable, 
See, I'm not biased to party. If a Republican pulled some shit like Joe Biden, I'd be in his ass just like I am in Obama's and Biden's. It's no longer about party in this country. It's no longer about what people say, oh, it's just too wild, it's a conspiracy theory. Rather than believe what you see just because you do a simple Google search, look at the source of the information that you're reading and believe it. The American Free Press, a writer for them did an interview in 2011 or 2010, Vic Thorne. Yeah. They published the interview. But yet, 90% of the staff at AFP still thinks I'm some raving lunatic. New Hampshire Herald, the type of publication that the Liberty Movement should actually appreciate because they don't tow a party line. They're small, privately funded, community-based newspaper. They were literally shut down and put out of business two days before Christmas in 2011 because the editor dared publish a cover story with an in-depth interview with me over my original 2008 allegations. Not because he wanted to pump up Larry Sinclair, but because he wanted to point out how the standard is different when you're a Republican and you're accused of something. Everybody remembers Herman Cain last fall, right? You remember the blonde bimbo, Sharon Bialik, right along, standing next to, of course, you know, that ambulance chasing bitch, oh, excuse me, witch, <coughs> Gloria Allred. See, I no longer care what people think of me. What I care about is, if you take the time to read what we put out, if you call me and ask me a question, I won't run from you. I'll answer the phone and I'll give you an answer. It might not be the answer you like, but I'll tell you exactly where I stand, what I feel, and I will tell you the truth, regardless of whether it makes me look good or bad. What I said last night, I really meant. I understand everybody here has been talking about Dr. Ron Paul. And you know, I said last night, I respect the man. And he's done a lot to promote freedom and liberty for all of us. But it's only when you decide to start promoting the principles that Dr. Paul brought, first and foremost, that people will start taking everybody in this movement a little more seriously. And I'm not telling you to do that because you need to comply with, with the right's version or the left's. Remember, I'm the one that says everybody needs to stop fighting each other and show up in force. Show up in Tampa and let the RNC know that you and you alone are the key to whether they win or lose in November. You can make that choice. And you do have the power to impact this election to that level. Forget about all the crazy stories that people tell you about each other. It doesn't matter. Do you believe in this country? Do you believe that you should have the right to live your life without someone else telling you what to do? Then stand up. Let them know. It, I, I don't even like to use the phrase, people need to wake up, because I think people are wide awake. It's come down to people having to decide. Are you going to be willing to take the fight and stand on it and not be scared off? If you do that, I guarantee you, the RNC will have no choice but to listen and give Dr. Paul and the Liberty Movement a place on the RNC platform in Tampa. But as long as different groups start fighting each other and eating your own, just from a little inside information from one of the committee members in the RNC, you're providing them what they're going to use to justify trying to continue to dismiss Paul and his supporters as being on the fringe. So stop fighting each other and take the fight directly to the RNC 
up close, personal, and loud and proud. And on that one, guys, I'm going to tell you, Paul, thanks for the invitation. I've had the time of my life, and I've also learned something. Some people were made for sleeping on the ground, but this ain't one of them. All right? All the bands here, you guys look around. Some people have said, there's not many people. I want to make this perfectly clear before it gets said again. I would rather have five people here that actually listen to what people had to say, what the band sang, and left here and carried it on and did something about it, yeah. as opposed to having 5,000 people who come, don't listen to nothing, and leave here, and everything stays here. Yeah. You, as an individual, can do more for the fight of liberty and freedom than you can ever expect from any organized media group. And we can do it if we work together. Thanks again.